Hi, I'm Wanda from Melanda Craft and today I'm going to show you how to make the cafe wall illusion quilt. Now, all of these lines are straight, but you get the illusion of the fact that they actually bend as you look at them. So, this took us a bit of time to nut out, but we finally got there and we've made a tutorial that we think you'll find relatively easy. It is time consuming and there are some tricky bits, but follow along with us and you'll get to make this in no time at all. Now, it looks great like this. Or you can have it this way. So as you see, it looks great either way. Now you can make this as large or as small as you like. So let's get on and show you how to do this one. So what I'm going to show you today is the technique on how to create this illusion quilt. I'm not going to show you how to make a quilt. The, all I'll be showing you is how to make a sample piece like this, which measures 47 inches by 27 inches. Now, if you wanted to make a full quilt, there's no problem with that. You just add more strips. Or what I'm going to do with the strips that I have, am going to show you to make today is another section like this. And then I'll put the two together and probably fill it in with some pieces here to make it big enough for a quilt. But we're just going to concentrate on the technique on how to make this effect. So what you're going to need... A nine two and a half inch strip, so all of these are two and a half, so nine two and a half inch in white. I've broken my dark strips into six and three, so you could just have all black if you wanted, in which case you'd need nine, but I have six black and three red. Now, to get this effect to work, you're going to need some um, strips that go in between and these are three quarters of an inch and we've used grey. Now the reason we've used grey is because that what help, helps bring this illusion about. If you use any other colour, we've tried it with white, we've tried it with black and it doesn't work, it just fades away. You need to have the grey so the sort of mid-tone uh, works, seems to work best. And just another thing, make sure that you use plain fabrics or as you can see here with my red, it's a tone on tone fabric and it's just got a mottled colour. Some other fabrics that would work well is this one here. Although it's got a pattern, it's a red on red pattern and the same with this purple. So either of those would work well, that sort of thing would work well. As, but don't use anything too fussy. If it's too fussy, you'll just lose the effect altogether. So what I've done is I've taken three strips off the white pile and I've opened them up and laid them out. Now these have been cut across the width of the fabric. And I've also taken three of the black strips and I've laid them out as well, as you can see here. So we start with a white and we end with a black. So this is our first section that we're going to sew. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the black one on top of the white, just match one inch with the, the selvage at the top, and I'm going to sew all the way down with a quarter of an inch seam and I'm going to do that with all three of these stri um, strips. So there we go. So that's how it'll look and I'll just measure, you know, straighten it all up and sew it down. So all the way down with a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to do that with this lot and then we'll come back and do the next lot. So I've sewn those strips together and as you can see they're in sets of two at the moment and I've pressed the seams to the dark side so you can see that here. Okay, press them down there. So now what we need to do is we're remembering that we're keeping the white as the edge but we'll take the second lot of strips, just place them face down so we've got a white strip running against a black strip and what we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way down. Then when I've done that, I'll be able to come back and those four will be together. And we'll do the same thing with the last set. We'll bring them over there, sew them down with a quarter inch seam, and all those six strips will then be in one piece. Okay, so I've sewn those strips together and they're all in one big piece. So I'm going to do exactly the same now with the rest of my black and white strips. So I'll sew them in the same manner, doing them in lots of two and then joining them. And then when that's done, I'm going to join that group to this group. So I'll just sew again with a quarter inch seam all the way down. So I've got all my strips sewn together. I have my six white and my six black all sewn alternating, starting with, with the white at the top and ending with the black. And I've done exactly the same with the red. I've started with the white and I've ended with a red. So I have my three strips of white, three strips of red. 
so that's how you sew them together so now you can see that the ends here are really messy but that's okay we're going to trim that up later but to start with we'll trim using this end where we've got the salvages because that'll give us a nice neat start because now we have to cut this all into two and a half inch strips now the first thing I did was trim up my salvage edges so that I have a nice straight edge here and I have my strips running this way now I'm going to be cutting two and a half inch strips all the way along my material so we'll just make a start okay all right so that's my first strip and I'll just move my ruler along to the next two and a half inch and continue to to cut this into two and a half inch squares so I've cut all my strips and here they are now I have 16 of the black and white strips and I have 16 of the red and white strips and you can see that the red and white strips are a lot smaller but that's because we didn't need as many and so we didn't have a, as big a sheet to start with now if I take one of these strips and place it up here you'll see that it only goes half the distance so what I need to do now is to take a second strip and join it together and the same with the red only with the red, what I'll do is I'll need to put four together. So what we're going to do is pick up a strip, and place them right sides together, making sure that we keep the pattern in a continuous manner and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch across there. So I'm going to do that with each of these strips. I will take two black and a white and sew them quarter inch. With the red, I'll take the, put the white and the red together, sew them with a quarter inch seam, but then I'll keep going. I'll take another strip, place that there, keeping the pattern in the same manner, and I'll do that with four strips. So I'll go and do that now. So I have my strips all sewn together, so I now have these long strips here. I have eight in the black and white, and I have four in the red and white. So now we need to organize our sashing. So what I do is I take my sashing, these are the three quarter pieces that we cut earlier, and I'm just going to cut the salvages off. Now you'll probably find that your sashing isn't going to fit all the way down your stripe, your strip. So you'll need to join them. So what I do is I take two pieces. Now you can do this either way. You can either do it this way where you sew across here and create a mitre like that. Or you can do, so you've taken two pieces to do that. Or you can take two pieces and just simply sew them across. And I sew them twice so that they hold together because I found with sewing it once that it unraveled and even backstitching started to catch it all in to the material and bunch up. So just sew them across twice, press them open, and that'll give you a strip that's um, long enough to go all the way down. And you just cut it off at the end once you've sewn it on, uh, and then you can sew what's left to another strip to make it long enough again. So now you need to lay your strips, start laying them out, and make sure that you have the same color at this end. So we've got all our whites and all our strips will be laid out with the white at one end. Then we take our pieces of sashing and we, apply, we just lay them out and we're going to pin them and sew them to each bottom edge. Okay, so you can see here I've got them laid out how they're going to be. Now you just keep doing that with all of your, your strips including your red and white ones. Now there is one exception and if you come up here you can see this bottom one here doesn't have a piece of sashing on the bottom. So what we do is so that we remember not to do that, we take one strip and just take it right away and we forget about it until we get to the end. Okay, but in the meantime, every single strip now that's left will have a piece of sashing attached to the bottom edge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the sashing onto my strip. I find that with these little strips it's, it's easier to pin. You don't have to if you don't wish. But then once I've pinned them all the way down, then I'll go and sew with a quarter inch seam from one end right the way to the end of my strip. Okay, so I've got my four strips here. I'm only going to work with four to show you this technique. And as you can see, I have the sashing sewn onto each piece and they're facing away from me. Don't forget to have all of your white strips at one end and your colored at the other so that everything goes on nice and neat. If you turn this round, you'll end up with this, this sashing on the wrong side. Now, when you're sewing your 
strip, uh, your sashing onto your strip, make sure that as you sew, you keep these white seams facing towards the red. So as you sew, just lift a little bit and just to make sure to push the seams so that they are laying flat and out towards the red. Now then, when you come to iron your sashing, you can see here that I've ironed it flat. Now, it does have a tendency to want to do this. Don't iron it like that. Make sure you push it and force it so that it goes flat. Otherwise, you're going to end up with all sorts of problems when you come to sewing this together. So now we're going to sew our strips together. And I like to sew them in groups of two and then add them all together later on. But what you'll need to do is lay your, your strips down and have the sashing facing away from you. So all your strips will have all the sashing facing away. Now, if you come up to the board, you'll see here that they're indented by a half a block. Okay, so you need that to get this effect. So back to the mat. Now what we're going to do is take our first strip. Now remember, at the moment, both sashings are facing away. I'm going to turn one over. So now I have a sashing facing towards me and one facing away. And then I'm going to draw a line at the halfway mark on my second block. Now I'm going to match that mark up with the seam line on the second block. So just like that, you can see there. And I'm going to pin that. And then I'm going to just lay that. You only need to do this once because that will line up the rest of the blocks for you. Now if you look very carefully here, you can see the dark colour through the white uh, block here and all the way down it's like that. Now it's not critical that it's exactly a half, it can be out a little bit. But you can just, if it's too far, you can just ease it as you're sewing. So then what we're going to do is we're going to sew our strip a quarter of an inch all the way down to the end. So that when we've done that and we open it up, again our sashing will be uh, facing away from us and our blocks will be a half a block out. Okay, so I've sewn together my strips into lots of two and you do that with all of the strips that you have left and remember that we had one at the that we took out at the beginning that we didn't have any strips on so you'll attach that to the very last piece of sashing. So just remember that, that one that you've got aside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our first set of strips Remember, at this point, we have our sashing facing away from us. But now we're going to turn it over, and we've still got our line here. We're going to line that up with the second block, and just make sure that that's there. But we've now got a piece of sashing facing us, and that's the piece that we're going to be pinning. So again, if you can, see that the other um, blocks through your material just keep them to approximately a halfway. If you can't see them, then just pick them up every now and then to make sure that they're all halfway so that they're staggered. Okay, and so when we come back, that will be sewn on there. And you're starting to get that illusion effect now. So you'll just keep doing that. Take the next lot of four and pin them together and sew them in exactly the same manner. So I've sewn together those four strips as you can see here and you'll continue to do this now with all of your other strips. You'll do them firstly in block, uh, strips of two, in four and then you'll just keep adding until you've got all your strips done together. Now the next thing that you need to do of course is to trim. So you'll come back and you'll put your, your quilt down and you'll trim both sides and then you just need to decide how you want your quilt to look. So if you do two pieces like this and you could have a block in between or you could just continue striping down. You can even turn it the other way if you wish. It's all entirely up to you. All we wanted to do here was show you the technique. Now the full written instructions with photos are on our website at www.alandacraft.com and if you've enjoyed this video give us a like, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you next time.